In this video, we're going to be going over the concept of torque, and we're going to be talking about uh, how it relates to Newton's first, second, and third laws, and we're going to see an example of it in action. So first of all, let's look at this thing here. So if we have, assume we have some pivot point, that's this dot here, and we have a stick going out. So can you imagine that? It's like, let's say it's just this right here. So here's my pivot point, it's going to be my fingers, and this here's my pencil, okay? Now, if I apply a force to it, let's just say I apply a force, uh, let's say downwards, well then if I apply a force like this, I could make it turn or rotate. So there's this kind of, I mean, torque is kind of, it's not exactly, but it's kind of a rotational equivalent of force. Not exactly, because we're gonna see that it's not exactly equal to force, but it's, it's related. Now, how is that the case? Well, we've got this idea about torque, and you notice right here, this yellow, that's gonna be the, see what I, how we end up sort of rotating this object. We're gonna have this weird sort of concept of torque. Now it's easier to calculate than it is to understand, weirdly enough. So to calculate it, we have an equation in our uh, data booklet, and it just goes like this. Torque is gonna be given by the symbol tau here, it's the Greek symbol tau, and it's equal to F times R times sine of theta. Okay, so it's F R times sine theta. This is our equation. So let's first of all discuss what these different concepts are here. So first of all, applied force. That's this applied force that I'm, because it doesn't have to be straight down. I could be applying this force at this angle, at some weird angle. So this right here, applied force, hopefully you agree, this will be in Newtons. R is the distance from the axis of rotation. So this distance right here, because if I apply force over here, for example, or depending on if I apply a force over here, the torque is gonna to be way larger if I put it over here, right? Because if I've got it over here, it's gonna have this rotational sort of kind of equivalent of force. So this is gonna be in meters. Now the angle between the applied force and R, so this right here, well, you could argue, what about over here? Turns out if it's a sine of the angle, sine is still gonna be the Y value, so it actually won't matter, but it's gonna be the angle between the applied force and R. So that'll be in degrees. So how can we figure out the units for torque? Let's go down a step further right here. Let's just see, first of all, uh, I mean, sometimes the center of mass is gonna help for torque and alpha, the, accelerate, the angular acceleration. I wanna do this pro tip first, then we're gonna go back up to this, okay? So first of all, if theta equals 90 degrees, in other words, if this thing right here, let's say this is my pencil, and I'm applying the force straight down, so in other words, the angle between the radius and the applied force is 90 degrees here, then something nice happens. Right, what happens then? Well, if they're perpendicular, uh, the sine of 90, what's that? The sine of 90 is just one. So because of that, what happens? That means I end up with torque is just equal to F times R. Yay. So this right here is also a nice little pro tip here that's gonna help you out. So if ever you need to, you can see that F R is a way to get it to, if the angle at least is 90 degrees. Now why does that help us up here? Well, because then, hey look, if it's just force times the distance, that means it must just be units of force, which is newtons, times distance, which is in meters. So a torque is in newton meters. That's why I said it's not exactly equal to force. See, that's why I said kind of. And by the way, the direction of torque is really weird. This is just the direction of motion. I haven't said it's the direction of torque yet. We're gonna do that later. So let's first of all look at uh, how this relates. Uh, I like this thing here from Family Guy. <laughs> of course, this here is all because of, uh, obviously, if you pull on toilet paper, it might break before it actually rotates. That's what this is about. All right, let's look at Newton's first law. Remember, it says uh, in linear terms that, you know, object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted on by an external unbalanced force or a net force. Well, if something is rotating, it'll rotate at a constant speed if there's no resultant torque. So that's actually a key thing right here. Okay, so if there's no resultant torques, then this right here will help. It'll just keep spinning happily. So if there's no net or resultant torque, that means there must be no acceleration. And of course then, what happens then, that means it's, in, it's called rotational equilibrium. So something is in equilibrium, rotationally speaking, if there's no net torque. Now let's talk about Newton's second law. Remember F equals MA? Well, we have a version of that, but for rotation. So tau, this torque right here, is gonna be equal to, well, what's the rotational equivalent to m? Remember, it's i. And what is a? It's alpha. So we end up with tau equals i alpha, which is, hey, that's the rotational equivalent of this. So torque, remember, is in newton meters. Moment of inertia, 
if you remember the equation for i, it's uh, sigma, uh, yeah, sigma m r squared. That means it must be kilograms, that's m, and then r squared must be meters squared. And then now this angular acceleration right here, this will be in radians per second squared. All right. Now, net torque, what does that mean? If you have an unbalanced torque, in other words, you know, if the torque isn't zero, then it means it will accelerate. Just like F equals MA says, hey, if you have a net force, that means it will accelerate, while a net torque means it will also accelerate in the angular way. So that's, I think, is a key thing right here to remember. So I think that'll be a key little point right here that relates to this, right? And actually, that reminds me, I wanna show you something else here. This angle, Maybe I'll write it like this right here. This angle theta is not the same as this one right here. Remember that right here was the angular displacement. Okay, so this right here is really important. This is a little bit unfortunate that we have two different thetas. But the angular displacement in rotational terms, that's in radians, whereas this one right here is in degrees. So just be careful there, okay? So this right here is actually measured in degrees, whereas the other one is in radians. Okay, so now we have Newton's first and second law. Actually, Newton's third law, although I didn't write it down, uh, if you remember, Newton's third law says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, so what this means is that if you apply some kind of torque, well, that means some torque is applied to you. And so you can think of it this way. I remember seeing a video once, uh, and I couldn't find uh, a video that I could show you here, but in space, for example, if an astronaut is trying to use a wrench, because that happens, sometimes they want to tighten a screw or tighten a bolt or something. So can you imagine then, I have some big, you know, I'm in space, I'm an astronaut, I'm wearing my space suit, I'm trying to fix something, maybe it's a broken satellite or something. So I'm trying to, you know, use this wrench, this, this device, you know, to actually, you know, I'm trying to basically turn this thing to, you know, get this screw to turn. Well, if I'm in space, you know, and, and that means if I try to push on this thing, you know what happens is I end up turning. So astronauts have to brace themselves. They have to hold on to something else as they do it. Because if they just, you know, were floating there and just try to do this, what would happen is instead of them actually turning it, they end up, you know, they end up actually the ones turning. So that's sort of a rotational equivalent to Newton's third law as well. All right, let's talk about this torque direction. I like this when you're forever alone in your physics book trolls you. That's because they calculate the total torque on this thing. E. So what happens is this. If we do want to find a direction of torque, well, it says this. This is a weird, uh, we call this, well, it's a right-hand rule. I'm going to attempt to draw my finger like this right here. Okay, I'm going to attempt to do this. So I'm going to attempt to draw like this right here. And I'm going to attempt to then draw fingers like this. I'm a really bad artist, as you can see. If you've seen my videos on uh, magnetic forces, you'll see that. So this is my thumb. These are my fingers here. So this right here, okay, fingers. Oh my God, this thumb is way too big, but it will. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. All right, so this right here, we're gonna call this right here, uh, this is gonna be torque. Maybe I'll draw it in a different color here. I'll do torque maybe in yellow. So this right here is gonna be torque. And the fingers are going to be in, um, this right here, let me draw it in maybe yeah, blue, let's say like this. Okay, this right here is the sort of rotation. So what I mean by that is you're going to go from R to F. So what I mean by that is, let's say we have a circle. I've tried to draw it at sort of an angle so you can imagine this is like, you know, there's, there's a real object that's sort of spinning. Like this is so the rotation direction is going like this. Okay, we have this R, which is the radius, and we have the applied force, which is this way. All right, if we do that, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to curl your finger. So you use your right hand rule only. Okay, so it's a right hand here. You're supposed to take your fingers and put your fingers go from R and they rotate in the direction of F. So can you see that the way I've drawn right here? So if try this yourself. So put your right hand, put your fingers in the direction of R and then curl them in the direction of the force. Do you notice then in my case, my thumb is coming straight at me? That means that is gonna be the direction of torque. So in this case right here, then that means the direction of torque will be this way. It'll be sort of out of the page as it were. So that's actually how this is gonna work. So if it was the opposite, let's just say it was spinning the other way, you'd use your right hand, you'd point your, or you'd have to rotate it this way, you'd have to put your fingertips up in the direction of R and then curl in the direction of the rotation, you notice then the torque would be into the page, so it would go that way. So this is actually how we count torques. The torque direction is a bit weird, but if you need it, use this right hand rule, okay? So fingers from R to F, your thumb is the direction of the torque. So in this case, it's gonna be like this. 
All right, let's do an example. So we have a uniform metal rod. This right here is the rod in black here. It's set about a pivot and it's resting horizontally. So here it is resting on a support right here, this little support right here. So just sitting there like this on the support. Later on, we're gonna basically remove the support. It's gonna to start to rotate, but let's in part A, let's just look at it like this. So this is six meters long. The support is at five meters from this axis of rotation here, this pivot point. And the question is, what we're told, by the way, the rod's weight is 40 newtons. So that means we know this thing right here, its weight is 40 newtons. So the question is, what force does a support exert on the rod? What we're asking for really is this support right here, what force is it exerting on the rod? Sounds a bit complicated, so that's why I wanted to give you something like this, an example, so that we can really learn how to deal with this. Now, the fact that it is, uh, the good news, the applied force, you know, the, in this case, it's going to be gravity. Um, it's going to be at 90 degrees, right? So that means, luckily, I'm going to say this. So theta equals 90 degrees. So I know then that the torques, instead of just being F R sine theta, it'll just be F times R because a sine of 90 is one. So that's the good news, at least. I can use this idea that the torque will be just F R, yay. Now the fact that it's in equilibrium, this is going to be important here, equilibrium, what does that mean? Well, that means it's not rotating. Remember, we learned here that if it's uh, not rotating, if it's in rotational equilibrium, either it's rotating at a constant speed or it's not rotating at all. In this case, it's not. That means there must be no net torque. Well, that means, we'll say this, no net torque. Now remember, the direction of torque is a bit abstract, right? It's like, you know, this torque that goes out this way must be equal to the torque that's that way. That seems a bit abstract. So what I'm going to try to draw is this idea. It's not exactly torque, okay, but it's going to be, uh, maybe I'll do it in black here, that this, this idea, sort of this rotation left has to be equal to this result of the rotation, sort of, you know, rotation down has to be kind of the same as the rotation up. Now remember, this isn't the exact direction of torque because torque is going to be either into the page or out of the page, but I think this idea, this concept is going to help. So that means I have to say that so that F1 R1 has to be equal to F2 R2. So the one force times the distance one has to be equal to the force two times R2. Hopefully that makes sense here because we've got these different distances. We've got the whole thing right here and we've got the support. Okay, so I'm going to use it. This first one here, I'm going to call this one, is going to be, you know, this rod itself, this full length rod right here. And this one here, I'm going to call two, is going to be this, you know, from the pivot to the support. I'll call that two. So let's look carefully at what we do here. So if we have F1, R1, let's deal with that. F1, the applied force on this one right here, is going to be just the rod's weight. So it's going to be 40 newtons. Okay, that's going to be F1, basically. Now R1 is going to be this distance all the way out, so that's going to be 6 meters. But what's really important though is this, this is a very, very important part, is that that implies that the rod is just one dot, one you know mass at the end. But because it's a solid mass, we should use the center of mass, and that's why we're going to divide it by 2. This is not obvious, that's why I want to show you this one here, okay? That's because center of mass of the rod here. That's what this two is for. That wasn't obvious. I think the F1 times R1 was okay, right? That's R1, but why did I divide it by two? It's because it's not just one mass with nothing in the middle, it's a whole solid rod. And so the trick is, is we use the center of mass in order to deal with this. So that was the not trivial part right here, okay? That was important, but now equals, and I'm gonna say basically, F2, R2. Now, what is F2? Well, I'm just going to call out the applied force. That's going to be the force that this thing's going to apply upwards uh, times the radius 2, which is in this case here is 5. So you can see I've got 40 times 6 over 2 equals F times 5. All right, well, what's uh, 40 divided by 2 is 20. 20 times 6 is going to be um, 120. That equals 5F. Therefore, F must be equal to 120 over 5. So to figure that out, I could use my calculator, or I can say, well, 
120 divided by 10 is 12, and I have to double that, so that's going to be uh, 24. All right, so that means I know that the applied force that the support is exerting on the rod must be 24 newtons. And how many decimal places am I allowed to use? I am allowed three because it's 40.0, so I can say 24.0 newtons. There we go. That one's done. Phew. Done part B now. Now we remove the support rod, so that one's gone. So what happens now? That means now we have this rod here that just starts to rotate. So this rod right here, if I can look at it like this, this rod now starts to rotate. Now, the important thing is to remember that it's still like the center of mass is still moving, okay? So it's really important here, the center of mass, you can consider it as if the center of mass is the one that's moving. All right, so what does that mean? Well, that means I can figure out the torque then. I can figure out what is the torque going on here. Torque is going to be equal to, well, because it's, uh, remember, the angle here is still 90 degrees of the force, the applied force from gravity. So it's just going to be F times R. So in this case right here, then the torque, we've actually already found it here, but let me just show you why it is. So remember, the torque then is going to be the applied force. So in other words, the weight of this thing here, which is 40 newtons times the radius. And remember, we don't use the radius of six. Well, we could, we could say six, but we could say divide it by two, right? And again, that's because of the center of mass here. Okay, so that's the important part there. What does that equal? Well, now I have the tau equals, well, 40 divided by two, which is 20, 20 times six is 120. So I'm gonna use this idea, okay? So I've got tau equals 120. Well, now if this thing here accelerates, I need an equation that, that relates angular acceleration. And I have that one. Do you remember it's right here? That tau equals I alpha. So let's look at that. So I have tau equals I times alpha. And I know tau. I know that that is right here, right? I know that that is this number right here. So can you see then that I can say, state that, well, alpha must just be equal to, well, just tau over I. So the torque divided by the moment of inertia. And I have that, don't I? I have that torque is 120. I have that the moment of inertia, let me just write that down a little bit nicer. So I have 120 here. I have the moment of inertia is 30.1, and there's nothing weird about the units, it's kilogram meters squared. So let's take a look at this right here. I'll use my good old calculator and say, what's 120? Divide that by 30.1. I end up with 3.98671. 98671. Well, that means then I have alpha is approximately equal to, I'm only allowed three significant figures, so I'll say 3.99, I guess I can say. So 3.99. And what are the units of this? Well, remember what acceleration is. It's in radians per second squared. So it's radians times second squared, like this, uh, second to the minus two. So this is my initial angular acceleration. Well, that's because it's going to change, but at least initially, right when it starts, that's what it's going to be. Hooray! So you can see what we've done in this video. We've, first of all, learned about torque, an equation for it. We've learned a few pro tips here. What we've done, of course, we've talked about Newton's laws, how they apply, especially for rotation. We've learned about the torque direction, and then we've actually done an example.